Shortly after his misdeeds were exposed, Harvey Weinstein played the favorite card of every cornered celebrity. He's not depraved. He's sick. He's the real victim here. Well, some Americans actually struggle with real diseases, diabetes, arthritis, cancer. Weinstein struggled with an ailment that had made him sexually harass or assault almost every woman in sight. And like countless other famous people, Weinstein says he's getting that illness treated, the help he needs. He's reportedly entered a $2,000 per night rehab clinic in Arizona to treat what he says is sex addiction. Will he emerge a new man? Would you let him babysit after? Nell Gibbon Daly is a psychotherapist. She joins us tonight. Nell, thanks a lot for coming on. Hi, thank you, Tucker. Thanks for having me. So, if you could just clarify the difference between a sex addict and a sexual predator, and why is Harvey Weinstein an addict, not a predator? Well, a sexual addict would be someone who. Uh, uses sex a lot to get comfort, right? They have an addiction to, let's say, pornography or looking right. at certain images. Someone who's a sexual perpetrator actually acts upon their sexual fantasies and breaks the law. Well, that seems like a great distinction. I, mean, I agree with you. So why is he in rehab since he's clearly in the latter category? Well, that was the choice that he made, right? He said that what he was going to do to repent for the things that he has done is to go to rehab. Uh, the question is whether or not he will turn himself in. Some people in my community, some feminists are coming out and saying, why wouldn't he actually like thieves who steal cars and turn themselves in if you admit to having committed these crimes, should you uh, face jail time in the legal system? So you said in order to repent, so it's kind of like buying an indulgence from the medieval church, like all is forgiven once you, you know, pay two grand a night to go to Santa Monica to talk about your problems in group therapy. I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like. You know, what are his options at this point? You know, if, if he right. said that he wasn't going to go into therapy, how would he look in terms of um, the media? The problem is, and the really interesting question here, is that with men, social shame doesn't stop them from committing this crime, right? We look at people like Bill Cosby, Bill right. Clinton. We look oh, at, right. uh, you know, O'Reilly. Um, and now we have Harvey Weinstein. That's the fascinating question to me all of the time. Like, how is it that they're able to commit these crimes without thinking that there's going to be some, like, moral and huge social implications, considering the fact that they're men with so much power and they have so much visible exposure? Right. Well, these are, these are powerful drives. I mean, that's a, that's a, fair, that's a fair point. Um, I guess what bothers me about it, there are two things that bother me. One, it's so transparently phony. It's not a disease. The guy acted like a jerk and maybe criminally in some ways. And it degrades the idea of mental health treatment, I think. It's not, a, it's not a serious use of a mental health facility. It's using it as a public relations shield. Does that bother you? Um, I mean, whether, whether he's using it not as a public relations shield, yes. It, but I would have to disagree with you. In my community, there has been some success with people who are um, sexual predators. I'm going to call him a sexual predator. Um, in terms of rehabilitating them, it's much easier to treat somebody who has committed this crime once, though, than someone who has done this over years and years of time. Right. So what we have to do is because we can't lock these people up for life. Uh, in fact, in a lot of cases, we can't lock them up at all. Look at the case of Bill Cosby. What do we do when they reemerge back into the community? And the thing that we have to worry about is protecting other people in the community. I'm not saying I necessarily know whether Harvey Weinstein is going to commit this right. crime again, but he's certainly at risk for doing so. So I guess the other thing that bothers me is the self-involvement of it all. All of his statements refer primarily to himself. And going to a place where you pay $2,000 to talk more about yourself seems like pouring kerosene on a campfire. Maybe he should be paying to go to a facility where he talks about other people's problems. I mean, is it, do you see why self-involvement drives this kind of behavior? It's all about me and my needs and what I care about. And he convinced himself women wanted to watch him take a shower. I mean, this is a very self-involved guy. Right, but therapy is what the therapy would do and what therapists would do in this kind of facility, whether that's, again, inside the prison system or without, um, outside the prison system, is that they would work on his grandiose ideas of himself. They would work on the very core uh, things that he feels about women. They would challenge that. They would ask him to be more more empathetic towards women. There's many things that in therapy they would do to try to deconstruct right, why but, he did what he did. No, I get it, and I know that that's very common, but as you just conceded, it doesn't work very often, and maybe the whole premise is wrong. Maybe you should stop talking about yourself so much. 
All these people talk about themselves endlessly. Maybe they should stop. Do you think that would help? What's the other? What's his other option? Talk about other people. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I think I think listen to other people look, for once. Look, well, maybe maybe what is going to happen after he comes out of this um, entire situation is that he's right. going to hopefully give back to the community, open his checkbook, and support a lot of causes that um, would Ooh. would benefit women. <laughs> Nell, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me on, Tucker. I appreciate it.